All right, guys, let's do this. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. This is the iHeartRadio countdown. I can't believe I finally met this guy about like 20 minutes ago. Now I feel like I know you. Knox, how are you, man? Dude, I'm good. We're best friends now, brother. Pretty much. You're, is it safe to say over the last year-ish, your life has gone from whatever it was to just absolute insanity? It's pretty madness right now. I'm a bi- I'm a busy boy. I can say that. <laughs> yeah, you're a big uh, Fallout Boy fan. Yes, sir. Okay. We and, stand. Yes. In a few moments, I'm, I've, I've known Pete for forever. He's such a good dude. And you just FaceTimed with Pete a few moments ago. What I was? Did. I mean, give me your. I mean, I, I I text him and I said, Hey, uh, Knox is saying some good things about you. I said, Can you FaceTime? He goes, I'm here. So it, when when I turned the phone around and there's Pete Went staring at you. Was that? All you was it all you hoped it would be, dude? It's crazy, man. <laughs> I dude, Fall Out Boy was my first ever concert, and like I've loved their music since like literally when I was a, a baby. So you know, it's cool, man, to have people like that supporting you, man. Have your, you know, I always say, turn what's the what's the saying of turn your heroes into homies, dude. Oh right, so, yeah. Pete Wentz and I are best friends now too. So Clearly I mean, let's, so. <laughs> and I guess you're gonna go. you're gonna see him in Nashville now. According to like you, Pete said he said roll up with your bunny. costume. Yeah, I have to wear my bunny costume because it'll be around Easter. So, but I'll do it. I'm shameless, brother. I'll do it. Knox the uh, EP. I'm so good at being alone. You got some great titles for your EP. Thank by you, the way. brother. I think the other another uh, title you had for what? How to lose a girl in seven songs. I believe. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, uh, well, describe this EP and are you good at being alone? Um, no. Uh, first Same. of all, no, I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm a liar. Um, but I, uh, yeah, dude, this this was an EP where you know sonically, I feel like compared to How to Lose a Girl in Seven Songs, we really just wanted to push the boundaries on like what we were really capable of. Like I feel like How to Lose a Girl is very like down the middle. You can tell they all belong in the same project, right? right. And on and on this song, I feel like. Or on this EP, I feel like we just kind of expanded those borders where you know we have songs like I'm So Good at Being Alone or Miss When You Miss Me that are full-blown pop songs. But then on the other side, you have Love Letter Man Down and We're Not In Love Anymore with Charlotte Sands that are full-blown like punk rock. So I feel like How To Lose A Girl was like this box, right? And then I'm So Good At Being Alone, we just like made the box bigger. You I know would think I mean? it'd be kind of difficult to fit songs, like a concept album. Those are, unless you have 50 songs that are perfect for this concept. I would think that, I guess, a long story short, I think that would be tough to fit every song into a box at times, right? right? Yeah, I mean, dude, it's one of those things. Coming up with a concept, I feel like I never have a concept while I'm writing the songs, like, for the project. But then when I look back and I get the collection of songs together, I'm like, okay, these these are the songs that I want to put out. It, the, the, the through line through all of them kind of reveals itself, you know what right. I mean? Um, and I felt like that project in particular, So Good at Being Alone, was one of those where... After How to Lose a Girl in Seven Songs, you know, it kind of starts off at the beginning where you're back at that same point where, you know, you just lost this girl, whatever. But then by the end, it's like, oh, wait, no, like, I think I'm, I think I'm going to be okay. Like, I think I'm good, <laughs> right. you know? Hey, uh, what song, there's a reason I'm asking this. What song almost didn't make the album? Ooh. Because you, a lot of times, and I don't know why this is, maybe you have some insight. A lot of times those songs become big. Yeah. For some crazy reason. Dude, so I have a song on there called Nevermind that that one... Well, so it was weird. We had a bunch of different variations of this record. Um, there were a bunch of different songs, but I feel like Nevermind was the one that I remember specifically wasn't going to be on there until, no joke, I think it was 24 hours before we had to turn it in and, like, get it uploaded. No kidding. Yeah, we were like, okay, which one? Is it this or that? And we went with Nevermind because we had this other song that is going to come out eventually. I don't know when, but it's called uh, She's Not Okay. It's, like, sick. Um but, I mean, I guess this is a good problem to have, but my label was kind of against it because they were like, this shouldn't be like a throwaway song or whatever. This needs to be like a single. It's really good. Um, so I was like, well, I guess if that's the reason you don't want me to put a song out, like, I'll take yeah, it. Yeah, rough so, problem for sure, yeah. Yeah, so I was really just, so then after that, I was on the phone with my manager, Wes, here, and we were like going through songs, like, what's one more song that we can put on that's like sick, but isn't necessarily a single? And so we landed on Nevermind, and yeah, 24 hours before we uploaded, we, yeah, got that mastered and sent it in. The story, the real conversation, you've told it a thousand times, you'll tell it a thousand more. You're trying to hook up with this girl. You're like, <laughs> well, I made this a bad way to put it. But you're meeting this girl. And uh, I guess, give me that conversation again. Dude, I pretty much just was trying to be cool. And I said, you know, uh, you know, you tell people you make music. And, like, if they don't know you, they're like, oh, okay, I, yeah, I bet you do <laughs> I know, make right? music while you work at Kroger or whatever. <laughs> um, or Ralph's out here. I know you guys have Ralph's. Um <laughs> But no, so, you know, it was that, and I was like, no, 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 I, like, I got a record deal, I'm, like, signed to Atlantic, I was trying to be cool, whatever, and, she, you know, they were just like, yeah, that's cool, but you'll never be Matty Healy, and I was like, 
Ouch. All right. I was like, okay. And I thought it was hilarious. And so the very next day, yeah, the very next day, we started working on the idea for that song. So, uh, yeah, it was funny, man. And I know you've, I've heard you tell the story before, and uh, you have no idea who she was. You met her no. once, rejected. Yep. Okay, see you later. 30 second conversation, if but that. I bet she knows. How could she, unless she rejects everyone with that same line, which that would be just weird. Yeah. I, she's got to know. It was in LA, right? Yeah, it was in LA, yeah. Some, okay, out here. somebody, whoever that girl is, you need to. I, I just need to know that you know. I don't know why. Yep. If I find out who it is, I'll let you. Please. Not, not that you care. But no, it, but no, right. but let me know. All right, Knox. They, yeah, whoever that girl is, it, uh, maybe a, just a thank you for rejecting. Yeah, you know exactly. Take that, Knox. When did you know? I mean, you put these songs out. It's a great track, but you never really, you never really know. You yeah. Know, I think I'm an expert, but I never know crap when it comes to this. When did you know that? Holy crap! Not the 1975 is happening. Dude, I think it was when seeing it live, like I was seeing people sing it in front of me and I was like, oh, people are like getting this. Oh, wow. um, and then right when I got off tour, I was on tour with Nightly in the fall. And uh, right when we got off tour, I posted one live video. And then, you know, this is six months after the song came out. And uh, and I posted one live video after that and it did like three million views and it just kind of took off from there. And since then, it's just kind of snowballed into this madness that has led me to your wonderful show <laughs> oh my god this song has and continues to change your life yes sir every day uh tour i think your tour launches uh april am i right with that? yeah april 8th is day one and you, you're going all over the place like what, you, are, do, you, do you like road life oh i love it man i love it i just love being able to go and see the people that love the music man because i love it and so it's nice to hang out with people that are vibing with me <laughs> now you, you uh, everybody most everybody i've talked to one artist that didn't like the stage part of it. Most everybody likes being on stage. I get that. But everything that goes with it, the travel, the, yeah. you know, do you love that too? I love it all, man. I love it. I get to, dude, I get to see the country with my best friends and like, you know, I don't have to go and work a nine to five or, you know, I just like, right. dude, I feel, I feel like I, thankfully, like I'm super grateful. I feel like I live a very, f even though I'm extremely busy, <laughs> I still feel like I live a very like free lifestyle. You know what I mean? Right. Um, and touring like allows that. It's like, dude, you know, it's like, hey, does it suck making 14 hour drives? Yes. But like when it's a Tuesday morning and you're waking up and you're going to a venue getting ready to see all of these people that are going to come see you. I mean, it's like it doesn't get any better than that. All right. It's amazing. It's, it sounds awesome. And the, the rush of being on stage has to be like, you can't rec recreate that. Anywhere. Electric, brother. Oh, what a great, great way to put that. It's true or false. You never, before you went to college, you had never picked up a guitar ever. And all of a sudden you grab this guitar and things just changed. Is that any truth to that at all? True, true and false. So okay. I, I kind of, I, I picked up a guitar at the end of high school, like kind of. But not actually. I knew how to play. So have you ever heard Don't by Ed Sheeran? Dun, dun, oh, yep. Dun, yep. Dun. So I knew how to play that lick that on one string. And when I got to college, when I was starting to go to college, I was like, man, I feel like if I like actually learned how to play these chords, I could figure it out. So yes and no. But I picked up the guitar at the end of senior year and, and that, then took it. Isn't it crazy? Something you didn't do at all before then. It's And now it's all you do. Yeah, it is all I do. You're absolutely right. Wow. <laughs> the, not the 1975. We've talked about this track. I'm gonna play it now. What else do What else do I need to know, or should I just hit the red blinking button and go Dude, with it? To be honest with you, you should hit hit that red blinking button. <laughs> Let's send it, baby. Come here we, on. Here we go. Two part question, man. Okay. What do you consider your personal best live performance you've ever done? I mean, it, it was just about perfect. Then the complete flip of that. What do you consider your worst? Everything mm. went absolutely straight to hell. I would say, so my best, I would say, would be the most recent one we just did in Georgia, in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, that was probably the best show I think I've ever I've ever put on, and the best crowd I've ever played for. Um, it was at the Masquerade. It was sick in Atlanta. Um, the worst one, and this is a hot take, because everyone that I've talked to about it was like, nah, dude, the show ripped. But on this most recent tour, I did a show, we did a show in New York, at this place, Baby's All Right. And I didn't get to go on stage till 11.30, and I was exhausted. I'd been doing radio stuff all day, whatever, content stuff, everything. And the whole label was there. I had, like, 65 <laughs> label reps there. Oh, God. And uh, everyone that I've spoken to said the show went great. But me, personally, I was just—I couldn't get into it. I 
there was a part on my song Here's to Us that I have to sing really loud and this is really high note, whatever, and I totally botched it. Like, <laughs> you know, and like the heads of Atlantic Records are there. But ev- like I said, everybody said it was great. For, for me personally, that was probably my least favorite show just because I was exhausted and there was already a lot of stress and a lot was going on. Well, for, I guess to save you a little bit, I've heard worse. Like if one guy told me he fell off stage and the mic went into his throat... So oh. at least nothing like that. No, nothing you know, like happened. that. I did have one time. This was actually, this wasn't bad, but I, this was just scary. I did have one on the nightly tour we did. I had a girl that had a seizure in the front row oh, during my dang. set, and that was terrifying. Um, What'd you, what do you do when something? Do you pause, pause I just, everything? Uh, yeah, I just noticed that it was happening, and so I told everybody to stop and whatever, and we got security over, and then... uh, But then having to go back out to finish the set is very hard after that. Well, um, I assume... I, I would imagine she's okay. She's okay. She's okay. She's great. She hung out with us in the green room after we brought her downstairs after she got taken care of, and she was all good. So she got to hang out with us during nightly set, and it, it, it was great. She turned out to be fine, but uh, scary. Dude, all right. That's nice of you to do that. I mean, Thanks. you're a good human, to, to say the least. Thanks, you know, there's bro. that. The obvious question, which everybody asks you, have you talked to Maddie Healy? Uh, clearly, I've heard the story. He DM'd you. Yes, sir. Well, give me that whole thing. Dude, it was so funny. I was, uh, so it was before we were leaving for tour, and, uh, or actually it was the last day of Nashville had this crazy snowstorm, right? So I'd spent the entire week, like, when I mean grinding, I mean grinding Lego Fortnite, bro. <laughs> All right? I swear. Okay. Grinding Lego Fortnite, like I'm a 12-year-old. Get it. And, Just do it. Yeah, and uh, I'd been playing, I'd been playing all week, whatever, and it was, I'll never forget, it was a Sunday. It was Sunday, and I had been playing since 9 a.m. It's probably 7 p.m. that day. I hadn't been on my phone once. Bloodshot eyes. Yeah, literally, yeah. like, yeah, I'm wearing Scooby-Doo PJs, <laughs> dude. Um, oh, and, God. And, yeah, sure enough, I get on my phone. I get on Instagram for the first time that day, and it says, like, eight hours ago, Truman Black messaged you. And I was like, ain't no way, bro. And sure enough, I opened it up, and, yeah, Maddie had messaged me. But then I, like, feel like I accidentally big-leagued him because I didn't respond for nine hours because like, I had no idea that he messaged me. <laughs> Um, but yeah, pretty crazy that he's heard the song. Pretty wild. And he said something to the effect of, uh, jokingly, of course, he said, now you owe me a million dollars or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. He said, congrats on the song. Now give me a million dollars. And I was like, I'll give you whatever you want, man. Like, I love you. <laughs> so That's got to be cool. I mean, it really does. I, I should have been like, I should have been like, yeah, bro, I'll give you tickets to one of my shows. Maybe. And then he shows up, there's 300 people. Meanwhile, <laughs> like he's like ripping arenas. <laughs> oh my. You don't know this about, well, I, I kind of told you a little bit about this. I am obsessed with the paranormal. Ghost. Haunted Houses. I've got a podcast called Paranormalish. I am clearly off the deep end. Even your buddy Pete Wentz, your new best friend Pete My new Wentz, bestie. he told you about this. I mean, it's just it's just what I do. Have you ever had something you would consider a paranormal encounter? So I wouldn't say I've had an encounter, but I did. So when I was in college, I went to I went to Ohio University in Athens, Ohio, for two years. And when I was there, they actually have a proper Up on the hill, it's called the Ridges. They have a proper insane asylum that was the first place in the United States to ever perform lobotomies on people. What the what? Freaky, right? So, um, but it's closed down. It's all walled off. But me and one of me and two of my best friends, we broke into it. We busted one of the boards out. Of course. And we went walking around in this asylum. And and there's this thing on Google. You, I'll show it to you after this. But there's this thing where they have this is so messed up. But they have they call it the blood mark. And we went and found it, and I saw it in person. But they have on the floor from where, the, now this is back in the eight, you know, 1890, whenever this was, and they had left a body on the floor, like a dead person's body, and there is still like you can see the like where it was left, the mark on the floor, and they call it the blood stain. But it looks like a, I'll show it to you. I'll show you a picture of this. After and it really this. is what the, it, it is. Exa- it's the freakiest thing I have ever laid my eyes on in my life, and so. But we were going through, and they have all these abandoned, like, rooms, and there's, like, paintings from the people that were, like, the patients that were in there. And there's, like, murals on the wall of, like, what a sun. In the... I'll show you all the pictures. It's crazy, man. Freaky. When, when you uh, did something, I, I, I'm picturing you guys going in, and something happening, and you guys just running out. Is that, did you leave in, in terror and fear, or um, did you stroll out casually? No, no, there, there, nothing crazy happened, but there's, like, weird energy in there, man. Like, you go in, and you're just like, this is not, like... It's one of those things where you go in and you're just like, I don't feel safe. Right. Like, you know what I mean? It, which is like a weird feeling. That um, is, that's fascinating. When you're alone, wild. you know? Whew. Yeah. Right, my final my final note on the paranormal. Um, you're going on tour like we talked soon, you know, uh, uh, April. Would you consider 
staying in, and I'm sure one of these, even if you don't know it, one of these hotels has a history. Mm -hmm. Don't go into room 314, the seventh floor, this happened. Would you consider staying in a haunted hotel room and reporting back and tell me what happened, assuming you survived? Okay, so hear me out. I would do it. But not if it's on the seventh floor or anything, because I'm terrified of heights. So okay. if we're talking first floor scary room, I'm in. But first, like, okay. I don't need a spirit throwing me out a window and me falling to my death or anything like that. So, yeah. Knox, another crazy story may or may not be true. Uh, you auditioned for American Idol. That is true. What, okay, I, he I heard it went kind of good with one of the judges, not so good with, with two of them. What, what's this whole... Uh, I Give would, me the thing. I would, I would rate my experience as poor. Yeah, I would say that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it was but crazy. But Lionel Richie liked you, right? Lionel Richie liked me. Lionel Richie was very sweet. Um, but yeah, Katy Perry and Luke Bryan, they weren't huge fans. Uh, but, you know, like, looking back at it now, I'm like, I wasn't that good anyway. Like, I probably didn't even, like, I probably hit, really had no business getting to the filming point. I think I just kind of, like, talked my way to it. Like, because, right. you know, you meet with all these producers. You know, you go through, like, seven stops on the way to getting to the filming part. And so I feel like I more so just kind of like schmoozed my way to that point instead of my actual talent that, or, or I guess lack thereof at the time. <laughs> I think these things make, the bumps in the road make an artist. Exactly. The, I call those character builders, you know what I mean? That, great way to put that. And, uh, and well, next time you meet Katie and uh, Luke, you know, I bet they have a different opinion for sure. I, I sure hope so. Now, granted, they're not going to remember me and I'm going to be like, you've lived rent free in my head for six years and you guys don't even remember me. <laughs> Knox, you seem like the type of guy that's constantly writing, constantly recording, even on the road, even doing things like this with me. You're writing. It's, it's you're 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 a maniac when it comes to that, right? Have to, bro. And yes, you, sir. Uh, I, I was told that you wrote uh, on, on a recent trip to L.A. You wrote a whole bunch of songs. Like, oh yeah. yeah. What what happened in this uh, session, dude? So we, uh, yeah, I just spent. I mean, last week I spent the whole week just in Los Angeles, two and two two of my best friends. Um, so I write, I, I make everything with these two guys, Spencer Jordan and Cam Becker, just two of my best friends, two of the most incredibly talented human beings you ever met. Like, I, I would not be here without them. Um, and so, yeah, we spent the week last week just made a DIY studio in the kitchen of an Airbnb and um, pretty much just invited friends over and made some songs. We made some good ones, man. I'm, like, really, really excited. And that's how that's how it comes together. You just get kind of kind of relaxed in the house, a yeah. couple of drinks or whatever, you know, and yeah. then boom. Yeah, dude, it's so funny. People often think like, you know, and I, I definitely have had the, you know, I've been lucky enough to be able to do this, but you know, everyone thinks that since I'm signed and I come on radio shows and stuff now, everybody thinks that I like only make music in these like million dollar <laughs> studios or whatever. And I've de I've definitely been in some cool studios, which is awesome, but um I actually now that I think about it, every song that I have out has been made in, like, somebody's bedroom. Like, it's never... I've never actually made a song that's came out in, like, a big studio. Like, I've written some, but everything that gets made is, like, yeah, in, like, either Cam or that we have another guy who produces for us named Dan Swank, who's amazing. Um, but, yeah, it's all in a bedroom. It's yeah. crazy. I've heard of songs being, like, people record them on their iPhone into band lab with yeah. just the headpiece. Yeah. And that I mean and not re recording. Like that version gets yeah. not all the time, but you know. Dude, there's there's there can be there can be a magic in the first thing that gets recorded. No matter you know, I always we call it demo itis. Us artists call it that, where it's like you have a demo that you sing that it might not be perfect vocals, but then when you re-sing it, it sounds weird. Is, and that, you're is like, that the same thing as catching lightning in a bottle, so to speak? Like yeah. something happens and you're like, wow, I can't, you don't want to re recreate Yeah, exactly. That. Like, dude, we we actually saw my song Love Letter. I have this part where I go like, we don't mean nothing now. And it like does this like, I probably just sang it terribly, but like it does this little <laughs> run. And I was re-singing it and we did it so many times. And I could not get the run as good as I did on the track. So I actually had the producers go back and I was like, I need you guys to find the original vocal take from the demo. So it's like the only part of the whole song that, because you know, I re-sang the whole song, but the uh, that little run is from the very first time I ever recorded it. Actually, out here in LA, I did it with this guy Jason Strong. Um, and yeah, so it's like there's something. Sometimes there could be some magic in those things. Your family, your friends, the day ones, you know, early in the career, obviously, you know. But what what is their reaction to all this craziness, excitement going on? I mean, dude, it's hilarious, man. They like my cousins and my mom think I'm like famous. They actually think <laughs> I'm like a famous, famous person. Um, and then you know, kind of, you know, I mean, if you haven't had that, I, I think I'm famous moment yet. No, not that. I I've had my like, I've had my moment of like, oh, I'm a musician. Like, I'm a real musician. This is what I do. But not not because 
what I've learned about this is you have to be, especially as a musician, you have to be so famous to be a famous person. You know what I mean? Like right. I, I used to think, and when you had as many Instagram followers as I do, that like, how do you even go out in public? It's like, dude, I'm going to leave this station after walking in here and everybody knows me. And I'm going to leave and nobody's going to have a clue who I am for the next 48 hours. It's going to be hilarious. Like, Didn't you say your mom was asking, like, what, like when you go to the grocery store, like, your mom's at, how do, how do you make it through the grocery store? Right. And your response is? It, it, same way you do. Like, exactly the same. All right. Well, She's like, what's it like? And I'm like, it's crazy. I go in and get things and nobody says a word to me. God, that's so funny. <laughs> It might not last long, so enjoy this. Oh, while you I'm can. enjoying it. Don't worry. I'm. I'm. We'll see where the future takes us. We'll message, see. message to your fans. What do you want to say to your fans? Thank you. Thanks for being here. Uh, like seriously, without uh, you guys who listen to my music, I would not be sitting here talking with you, and uh, I certainly wouldn't have a job. So uh, yeah, thank you for being here. Please stick around. 2024 is going to be absolutely madness, and um, yeah, I love you guys. All right, Knox is here. On with the countdown. Let's go. This is song number one. There it is, number one this week on the iHeartRadio Countdown. Hope you're feeling that. What up? It's JoJo on the radio. Knox is here. A quick recap. Of course, not the 1975. This song is just blowing up. EP, I'm so good at being alone. That sound, he's got a, a crazy amount of music uh, on the way. Tour, everything else. Uh, Knox, what am I uh, forgetting to ask you? Must be something. Anything Dude, else? Dude, I think, uh, not that I know of. I'm just happy to be here, man. Thank you so much for allowing me to come in here and just kind of talk a bunch of mess with you, for, you for a little bit. It really does mean a lot. I, like, I'm from the middle of nowhere, Ohio, so to be this far from home and, you know, you guys supporting my music like this, it's 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 so cool. And so I really am super grateful to be here. So It's a pleasure to meet you. Thanks, man. At the end of every interview, fist bump to make it official. Boom, fist bump, Bye. make it official, baby.